Yeah. Welcome back to H-Town in Appreciate Houston. That, yeah. What does it feel like to be back? Oh, it's exciting, man. I love Texas. You know, Houston has always been so kind to me. People have always been so sweet and so nice to me. So I've, I've been very blessed to be able to come out and, and, and see all the, the supporters, you know? Yes. All right, come on. Give me the scoop. I mean, do you like our Tex-Mex fajitas? I mean, Beans, rice, tortillas. This is the thing. Like, I have to come in on a weekend. I know it's cheat day because I'm going to get a queso. I'm going to get, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try every color of tortilla you guys make over here because you guys have multiple colors. Being here at Kamapalooza, I mean, there's a lot of color, a lot of characters out. I mean... What are your thoughts? I mean, everyone's all excited. It's really a celebration of what pop culturally has become this almost biblical stories that have kind of somehow shaped our generation and also morality and heroism and all that. And to be able to see not just cinema, but television has done for the genre is, is unbelievable. From gaming to comics, you know, to film and television, you know, you're now finding everyone meeting in one place. It's here at Comic Palooza. Who was your favorite growing up? I'm a Batman kind of guy. I'm also a Spider-Man guy. What about know? Transformers? I love Transformers, Beast Wars, Gargoyles. I love Thundercats. Ooh, I love G.I. Joe. Yes. You know, He-Man. Okay. You know, I she mean, like, Shira, well, you know, I mean, you know, Shira had a lot of boys watching, I, and people want to wonder why they're watching Shira. It's the only place, like, nine in the morning that you can watch someone wearing a corset or whatever that she was wearing, you know? I don't know what you heard, but this show ain't free. All these youngsters who want to either be actors just like yourself, what was the message that you would give out to these folks who look up to folks like yourself? It's very cliche to say never give up, right? But you know, sometimes our friends, and even sometimes our family could be our, you know, our, our worst supporters. Uh, you know, for that support that you don't have at home, it's super important that you look yourself in the mirror knowing that uh, it really truly is only up to you whether you succeed or you fail. A medica. It's pronounced America. That's what I said, America. You know, I came from Venezuela in 1993, 94. They didn't know how to speak English, and you know, I had to start from scratch. And I remember at 13, 14 years old, I raised my hand, and they said, what do you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I'm, I want to be a famous actor. And everybody laughed, you know? But ultimately, it's really up to you. And if you don't believe in, in what you can do as a person, if you don't trust in the work you're putting in, and that that is eventually going to turn into the success you're looking for, then you're not going to get there. Special Agent Torres. Relax. We're on the same side. Are we? NCIS. CBS, what has that been like to be on that show? It's been incredible. I've only been on the show for three years, but to see uh, the impact that it has on families and on people and, and the inspiration that it brings and the entertainment, really, at the end of the day that it brings, uh, was exciting, you know, and um, I'm no stranger of long-running shows, you know, and uh, this one just feels like a family, too, and uh, Mark Harmon and I are besties, you know, yeah. we send each other classic cards on email all the time, and we're trying to, always trying to get each other to, to buy something unnecessary, you know, uh, we're still yet to lose the battle, you know, we don't know, <laughs> but it's nice, it's nice to be at a place that notes itself, um, and they gave me the freedom to create a character that NCIS Universe has never seen. As much as we'd all like to, we can't just go around punching people into being nicer. Why not? You know, he started out kind of as a lone wolf, you know, someone didn't play well with others. As an eight-year undercover guy, holds a lot of uh, different personalities, mm -hmm. you know. He's a guy who has had to become the bad guy to get the bad guy. So there's a level of darkness that comes with him, but there's also a level of lightness, too, that, that he sees in his job. And, uh, you know, in the second year, he assimilated more to being part of a team. He said, all right, let me see what this is all about. In the third year, you know, he, he became a little bit more hesitant as he lost, you know, a few of his uh, partners. And uh, therefore, he reminded him of why he worked alone mm. and why he didn't want to build relationships and feelings with people, you know. And you're going to see him be a little darker and eventually look in every suspect he encounters. Um, he's gonna look for the for the person that killed his friend. And why do you think the show has really resonated with the audience, with viewers? It's the characters, man. It's the secret sauce. It's about the relationships. It's okay. not about the case of the week, even though the case of the week really influences um, uh, our characters and emotionally. Um, but that's why it's so special. We actually have a real opinion about the case. I mean, and it's still the number one show in the planet. So it's kind of like an intense thing to know that, um, you know, every Tuesday night you have the most loyal fan base that's going to yes. tune in and watch you episode after episode. I mean, let's keep it real. I mean, as a special agent, you have to 
be at the top of your game. Yes. You got to be in shape. Absolutely. And you are looking mighty toned. So w what are you doing to get, get ready for this role? <laughs> oh, man, I really turned it on a couple years ago. I mean, I, I wanted to get some of those years back that I lost in my 20s. And some of you guys have been following me since 18. <laughs> you know that I lost a few cat lives in my life. I do all my own stunts, right? So I do all the fight sequences. I do all the mixed martial arts stuff. And and, and you know, you can pull something when you're 39, you know, yeah. and then you, the bounce back is not as quick, you know, so I'm trying to really uh, understand that. And, uh, hey, I so get you, I'm gonna be 42 this month. Oh, so good. You know, I, I get you, He's man. He's drinking the same water, fellas. <laughs> He's drinking the same water. Word on the street is that you're the uh, Latino Prince Charming. What's going on? In the movie, he's engaged to Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and Snow White. Um, he, there's a spell uh -huh. that was cast on him when he was born. He became too charming. And like he, he doesn't know what your love is. So throughout the movie, he has to find, he has to break this spell and find who his true, true love is. Ooh, um, that's and, deep. Um, it's really, it's really that's a beautiful, mm. beautiful story. Really, really funny. And I partnered with John H. Williams, who's the producer of the Shrek franchise. And um, so we produced that and he's the first Latino Prince Charming. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you give you. a shout out to Houston. Hey, Houston, you already know how I feel about you. I, Take your queso in my stomach back to LA <laughs> all the time. Uh, but uh, I love you guys and your love and support obviously means so much to me and happy to be sharing this rainy weather with you guys.